from Radboud University, and he will tell us about irrationality in our current times. Please, Vadim. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Alina, thanks, Philippe, and uh, thanks, Mike, who will hopefully see me in the retrospective. Uh, it's actually a pleasure to give uh, a talk after so many uh, days of just having nothing and uh, only the meetings, uh, one after another. And um, yeah, I, I find this time uh, particularly irrational and it seems to be not even over. So which also means that mathematics uh, will continue and so there would be some further irrationality things during this time. Uh, but I really hope to speak um, today about certain things that happened in the very last year. So at least uh, at the slightly before the pandemic, uh, during the pandemic, and uh, so which hopefully are still going on. And so that's uh, kind of um, the main topic of my things, of my talk. Um, I will speak mostly about the irrationality. I will also speak a little bit about linear independence and, and related things, diophantine things. Uh, but I, I've decided to, to dedicate the first slide to a very special thing, which happened uh, just, which happened uh, actually in May. So my joint book with Francois Bruno about the Mali measures appeared uh, in May uh, and it was published uh, by the Cambridge University Press. So let, let me just say that uh, to, to, to justify this uh, page, uh, this uh, advertisement, uh, the Mali measure is actually a very diaphantine topic uh, because it was introduced, the multivariable uh, version, it was introduced by Mahler in order to prove some inequalities for the heights. They were required in, in Gelfond's uh, method in transcendence number C. But of course, there are some uh, things which are related to Lemmer's famous question about the smallest Mahler measure. And those are also um, related to Diophantine methods, in particular to, uh, to some partial resolutions of, of this question by Chris Smith and uh, Edward Dabrowski. And so therefore the topic of the book is, uh, is related to the topic of the talk, but of course there are much more in the book. So I invite everyone, um, yeah, just to, to see. Um, and uh, I even managed to include uh, the reference to, to a very recent resolution of uh, the Schinzel Zassenhaus problem, which is related to Lemma's famous question. Uh, it was done by Vesel and Dimitrov. Uh, I think it was posted before the, the new year. And uh, I, I guess uh, the crisis time already started at, at that point. So we, we can say, uh, so is it okay for the, I mean, for the audio? Yeah, because, okay. Yes, yes, Vadim, it is. Um, <clears throat> And um, so I, I included the reference there, but of course, if, if you are interested in seeing this development, so you can also go to, to the original paper. Um, so the book is uh, just to prove that it's, uh, it's, it's in print. So, and uh, actually I have a, a poster on the book, which says that uh, uh, there is a 20% discount. And uh, so, but you need a, a special code uh, to, to enter when you buy through the Cambridge University Press. And the code is very simple. So I, I don't write it on slides so that uh, one really needs to see the talk to understand the code. So it's the first four letters of, of the title, M, V, M, M, and then 20. So that's a six uh, letter code. So, and uh, if, if you use it, uh, it guarantees something like 20% discount on, on this title. Um, yeah, so that's uh, um, about the Mahler measures. 
And uh, otherwise, um, I will be speaking about the irrationality of presumably irrational numbers. Um, so in my talk, and uh, I would, I would like to, to make some remarks about what, what is going on and to, to have it like in a colloquium style. So how one can prove that something is uh, an irrational number? Um, an efficient way to do that is actually to construct a sequence of rational approximations, but in a sense, a sequence which is good enough to prove the irrationality. So what is good enough? It means that, uh, so you see, I mean, the sequence of rationals, so it's represented by the quotient of two integers. Of course, I assume that Qn is non-zero. And then uh, I, I look for the sequence such that uh, these rational approximations, Qn psi, psi is the number in question, minus Pn, is first of all non-zero. Well, at least for infinitely many n, I can guarantee that. And also that this quotient tends to zero as n goes to infinity. I mean, this, uh, the existence of such sequence would imply that psi is an irrational number. And this is the only proof in my talk, so I, I put it in, in uh, parentheses, that uh, assuming that it's actually a rational number, so we could uh, still get uh, this limiting relation even if we multiply the elements of this sequence by p, so it tends to zero as n goes to infinity. And in particular, for sufficiently large n, so this quantity, the absolute value will be less than half, but not zero. But on the other hand, I mean, the very same quantity is, uh, is an integer. So, and this contradiction means that psi cannot be a rational number. But there is more. So one can actually uh, kind of volatilely decide how irrational is the number. To, to measure the irrationality of this number, if we can also arrange some kind of growth uh, or decay of, of, the, of, of these rational approximations. For example, uh, because it tends to zero, so, and, and uh, of course this is an infinite sequence, so Qn is supposed to, to go to infinity. So if we can manage this inequality, so that the absolute value of this difference is less than some constants, and then uh, Qn to the power uh, delta. Uh, and this happens at least for all sufficiently large n. So then we can also deduce from this inequality that for any other fraction p over q, so the quality of approximation of psi by this uh, fraction is at least of, of this size. Well, again, if I assume that the number q in the denominator of this fraction is sufficiently large. So in a sense, uh, when we can manage uh, to construct approximations which are good, so to, to manage to, to get this delta large, sufficiently large, so this would guarantee that, uh, so that uh, this, this quantity here, one plus one over delta would be sufficiently small. And uh, so this quantity um, and the, the quality of approximations uh, is called uh, the irrationality exponent so because it comes in the exponent. Or in the literature, you often also see this uh, dubbed as the irrationality measure of the number psi. So in a sense, in order to prove that um, so psi has the irrationality exponent uh, at most mu, so this is the notation for the exponent, so one, one simply needs to, to provide this construction of rational approximations. And uh, so mu would be kind of, uh, so the, the, the quantity one plus one over delta. So I don't give an explicit definition because I mean, there is no point in that. So you, you can, so it's some infimum of all possible things and so on. But I would mention that uh, for any irrational number, mu is always at least two. Uh, and this is guaranteed by Dirichlet's uh, theorem about approximation of irrational numbers. And uh, from metric theory of, uh, of numbers, so we, we also know that for almost every real number, two is the right exponent. So therefore, whatever you see some strange exponents like, I don't know, five point something, 
Actually, for all these numbers, we expect two to be the right exponents, but we cannot prove that. So, any questions at this stage? Yeah, because now I'm going to do some exposition through what what kind of things, uh, what kind of objects or real numbers I'm going to consider, and and what is the recent uh, developments about those things. Okay. So I, I, I should probably start with the uh, right side of this slide, because you see in the abstract there is a, uh, a, a very nice poetry. Uh, I don't know whether it's seen, because on my screen it is somehow participants close. Um, yeah, so that, that slide. Is it, is it also the same uh, for everyone? Then I have to, to read it. So before in introducing, I mean, the, the main kind of generator of, uh, of irrational numbers uh, for today. So, and, and the poem is written by the author of this paper, by Bruce Burns. And uh, I think it's a real more uh, case where some poetry appears in, in a mathematical paper by, uh, given by the author. One bright Sunday morning, I went to church and there I met a man named Lurch. We both did sing in jubilation, for well, he did show me a new equation. And uh, then he speaks about the functional equation, uh, the proof, which is due not to Lurch, but to Lerch. And uh, so there, there is also a story which I, I learned from Bruce that uh, at, at some point after one of his talks, uh, he, he was uh, kind of uh, caught by, by a person who uh, told him that uh, he had discovered a, a mistake in one of his papers. And uh, the mistake was actually that in, in, in this poem, you, you clearly see that uh, Bruce meant Lurch for the name, which is, uh, well, it's a Polish name, it's, it's uh, pronounced as Lerch. And, uh, well, that was the only mistake uh, meant, uh, but yeah, so I, I use this uh, as an opportunity to, to introduce this Lerch's zeta function, which is the subject of that paper of Bernd. But I, I will use it in a slightly different context because the values of, of this function, they appear to be very special numbers in, in, uh, in analysis and number theory. And uh, so I, I give some examples like pi appear as, as the value of Lerch's function. Also Catalan's constant, which is not known to be rational, uh, not yet. So is, is also appear as the value. And uh, there are also um, generalized polylogarithms and the zeta values themselves, uh, that's when a is one and z is one, so we recover the values of Riemann zeta function. So uh, Bruce Bernd had uh, a different notation uh, or convention, because z in, in my case is actually exponential of two pi i x, so infinite. But otherwise it's the same function. So that's uh, the main hero. In the, in the sense that uh, I, I will speak a little bit about uh, so the numbers which are involved, uh, the Lerch zeta function. And then finally, I, I'm going to, to talk a little bit more about pi. Okay, so let me start the story about uh, the zeta functions. So, so we all know that uh, the numbers, the values of, of uh, Riemann zeta function at even points or odd, uh, sorry, even zeta values are all uh, irrational and even transcendental numbers. And this is for a very simple reason that uh, they appear as uh, rational multiples of the corresponding powers of pi. And uh, Apiri somehow astonished the mathematical community in uh, 1978 by proving that zeta 3 is irrational. And uh, since then, uh, the next breakthrough in this direction was in Rival's work in 2000, when he showed that there are infinitely many uh, on the list of odd zeta values, which are irrational numbers. Actually, he did a little bit more. So he proved that uh, 
if if we kind of consider the space spans over the rationals by this by one and all these odd zeta values so the the q dimension of the space is uh, some absolute constant times log s at least of course we believe that they are all linearly independent and irrational but so th that was possible to to do with that method and um, so in this direction there was a kind of a different uh, different method appeared recently in my joint work with uh, Stefan Fischler, Johannes Sprang and, and myself so to also to attack this problem of the irrationality and we managed to, to show that there are actually more than, than this amount of irrational numbers and uh, the final step actually the latest achievement is, is done uh, it, it goes for, it comes from China from the work of uh, Li Lai and and uh, then you, um, who finalized their work in 2000, in 2020, I think at the time where there was already a pandemic in China, and so they they actually show that uh, at least this amount of of uh, odd zeta values are irrational. So which is roughly a root of square root of s, so which is uh, of course I mean much more than, than this constant coming out from Levi's theory. So um, good thing is that actually the, it's, I mean, this result doesn't really uh, kind of recover the results from, from uh, Revive's theorem because there is no dimension estimate. So the, the amount of, of the numbers which are listed here is, is really, so how many irrational are? But we have uh, no kind of uh, dimension estimate for the space spanned by all of the cities. So it is still the same as in, in original rewards here. And uh, I mean, to, to make the, the story kind of concrete, so here is uh, an abstract from, from the paper, which was, okay, so 16th of January 2020. It's, uh, yeah, pretty. Uh, fresh result. So where um, so they they actually give uh, even some explicit value for the constant which one can put, and so this amount of of numbers uh, c is times the root s over log s, so are irrational. So in our previous work uh, with uh, Fischler and Sprung, uh, we we had uh, just a much worse lower bound for the number of irrational. And uh, of course, I mean, there was also work by um, Stefan Fischler, uh, not on zeta values, but on, on this uh, kind of more general um, things where he could also come with a similar estimate. There was also a work of uh, Sprung about the edic zeta values. But uh, yeah, because that was a little bit before uh, their, their, I mean, the story of these improvements. So I, I only mentioned this briefly without slides. So here is uh, something that uh, is not even uh, online. So, but it it, it was uh, it appeared already in several talks, uh, and it's related to the irrationality of zeta five. So I, I would recall that uh, I mean Apiary proved uh, that zeta three is irrational. And that's the only odd zeta value for which we know for sure that it's irrational. Irrational, but if we go to the next one to zeta five, so the best result, which is uh, well way too old now, is that um, one of the four numbers starting from zeta five and ending with zeta eleven, so is irrational at least one. And uh, so the surprise is that uh, for the two edic version of of the um, of zeta five, so one can actually prove the irrationality. And um, so to it's of course we cannot introduce it by the series like uh, I had for the Lertz uh, zeta function. So because uh, we we really need something that converges uh, p edically. And so in the two edit case, uh, so the zeta of five can be defined as this limit. So, and uh, of course, I mean, this is a perfect integer in France. 
And so the number here is, uh, well, it's, it's also a rational number. So it, uh, it's over Q. And uh, so the fact that this limit as K goes to infinity uh, exists, so it, it follows from classical Kummer's congruence. So this is, this is a certain number. And so in, in the joint work of uh, Caligari uh, Dimitrov, so the same Selin Dimitrov, which uh, solved recently the Zassenhaus-Schinzel uh, Zassenhaus problem, and Tang, so they, they proved that this number is irrational. And uh, don't think that there is a cheap way to, to do this uh, in, in the two edit case. Uh, this is actually a very um, kind of significantly difficult result. And for proving it, uh, so there was a new um, kind of extension of the rationality criterion introduced which they also call uh, holonomicity criteria. So because uh, it's, it's not only a, about, uh, I mean, the, the, the generating function of the approximations. So it's a discussion of what, uh, what kind of uh, holonomic properties it satisfies. And depending on the order of, of holonomicity of this function, so one, one can actually uh, separate uh, so the, the uh, the rational and uh, the rationality and the rationality of, of these uh, generating functions. So I wouldn't go in detail uh, because I, I expect that uh, the, the final outcome will be published. And, and uh, also there are several talks, uh, I mean, the authors give on, on this topic. So you're invited to attend. But uh, this is really an achievement uh, which happens in, in these difficult times. So therefore, it's uh, my pleasure to, to actually, um, yeah, give, give it uh, in, in my talk as well. Um, the next uh, result is, is about, uh, I'm back to the Archimedean case, and, and this is really about uh, this uh, general uh, Lerch uh, function, so which I, I gave on, on one of the previous slides. So uh, there is a history, so this is a result uh, which would, appear in, in one of the next issues of, of the Moscow Journal of Complementarics and Number Theory. And it is by Sinodavi, uh, whom I see on my screen. I, I don't know whether, uh, yes, yeah, so. And uh, Norike Hirata Kona, whom I don't see, because there are only four people on, on my screen. And Makoto Kawashima. So uh, in, in, uh, in, in a very, actually, to me, it's, it's a very exciting, um, development, um, because uh, this is a very new kind of way of constructing um, the approximations to, to the entire set of, of this Lerch function, where you allow um, not uh, only um, kind of Z to be some fixed point, and not only X to be their fixed point, so uh, you, you can vary the values at which you consider Z, at which you consider the Lerch zeta function. You can also well, uh, kind of uh, consider different shifts, uh, different X in this formula, and for the entire collection of, of the functions. So you, you can construct uh, a complete uh, approximation pro uh, problem, uh, solve a complete approximation problem in a very explicit way. So which means that you can get all the constants uh, very explicitly and uh, one can show the, the results about uh, linear independence of, of the values of these functions at the points which uh, at least Z has to be very close to the origin. This is a standard setup for this polylogarithmic uh, setting. And so one, one can get uh, very general results about the linear independence of the values of, of the Lerch uh, functions uh, at um, several points where points are um, Z varying and, and also X. So that's uh, what, what is highlighted in this paper. But I, I assume that there would be a more detailed uh, account with all, all the details of, of the derivation of, of this uh, result. So I, I highly recommend. It's also on the archive. But because I, I have already some kind of uh, an almost final version from the journal, so I, I prefer to show you it here. So 
I, I hope I, I don't break any copyright here. Um, okay, so then, uh, I mean, kind of the last piece of information, which is, uh, which I also find uh, kind of touchy because uh, I know that uh, Raffaele Marcavicchio was working on this uh, criterion for many years and uh, somehow the crisis time uh, pushed him to, to actually do that and write the things down and, and also to, to work out several examples. So what he does, so he, uh, um, develops a new linear independence criterion, which addresses not the case of Hermit Pader approximation of the first kind, which is a standard setup for this linear independence criterion, but uh, he addresses uh, essentially uh, mixed type or the second, also the second type Hermit Pader approximation. I think there, uh, I mean, the, the abstract is, is very long and I, I can give you time to read it, or you can then later on follow the slides or the original paper. But, uh, well, a funny thing is that I also have uh, kind of some exchange with Rafael about this uh, when, when he was working on this criterion. And I remember that at some point, uh, I think it was in, in April, so he, he got stuck, but not because there was some kind of mathematical obstacle to go. Uh, he realized that he doesn't have enough paper at home. There was no way for him to go out and there was no even way to, to order paper from a shop because it was not uh, kind of considered by the government as an essential thing that can be ordered online. So that was a very tough timing for him. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy to, to see that he finally put these things online. And I think that uh, this criterion can be also kind of uh, be crossed bred with the result about the explicit uh, for the approximations from the previous slide. So, and uh, there, there could be some outcomes on, on the boundary of the two things. Because in, in the previous example, so the, the things is really the discussion of linear independence, so not dropping some of, of the things, but the, of the complete system. Well, uh, with the linear independence criterion, we, we really estimate the dimension of, of the Q space or some over some number field. And so that this, this kind of uh, ideas, they, they can be crossbred and uh, bring some new results into the area. Um, any questions at, at this point? So I, 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 I think I, I'm, I'm ready to go to Pi. And I, I'm not sure whether you, you could see again there, uh, so what, what is written, uh, yeah, so on, on, the, on the right side of, of the slide. So it's actually, um, um, uh, stone um, in, in, uh, to commemorate uh, von Lindemann, who proved that pi is a transcendental number. And so you, you see, uh, well, and it's written that uh, in German, that uh, so he, he was born at, I mean, the place now is actually just grass. There is no street. And it's, it's not far from, uh, so who knows Hanover? So it's not far from the Leibniz church. So it's, uh, I think it's, it's about 100 meters for, from it. But there is no church in, in, in the case of Lindem von Lindemann. It's only this stone where, which says that he spent his first lives in a house which was at this place. And uh, later on he came and, and proved that uh, so there is no possibility for quadrature of, of, uh, of a circle. So by showing that pi is a transcendental number. So this is in Hanover. Uh, well, I think uh, in, in Germany now the restrictions to travel are ceased. Yeah, I, I, I think. So one, one can travel, uh, but uh, probably it would be safer to do that uh, at the later moment. So I, I I don't advise traveling to Hanover right now. But the point is that uh, 
because we know that pi is a transcendental number. Of course, we, we also know that uh, pi is irrational. But the fact that we can write uh, also the irrationality uh, measure or the, to estimate the irrationality exponent of this number. So it first only appeared in 1953. Uh, Again, uh, so uh, the same name, Kurt Mahler. So he showed that uh, the, the measure of pi is at most 42. Well, uh, because pi is a so special number, and uh, because it's it's kind kind of very challenging to to construct uh, approximations to 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 this number, uh, also algebraic approximations. So uh, it it was a kind of a chain of improvements uh, which started from a work of Mignot, so who who showed that uh, the Mali measure is estimated by twenty. Then there were kind of small improvements coming from the brothers Chudnovskis. There was also one from uh, Ekaterina Ruhadza, from Dvornicic and Viola. And then there were several papers by Hata, so which uh, actually three papers where he improved again and again his, so he, his uh, estimate. And finally in 93, he published the estimate which is uh, that uh, the measure is at most 8.0161. And that was a very kind of serious uh, achievement. And you can just understand. So you see, I mean, here the records were lasting, I think, uh, sometimes one year, sometimes uh, two or three, so between Mignot and Hata. But the next uh, break, of, of the record happened only in 2008, 15 years um, <clears throat> later, uh, in a work of Salikov. And so you see, I mean, the break is roughly by 0 0.4. And uh, so the achievement was done because Salikov uh, just made possible, so he found a different set of, of approximations. So I, I should mention that, I mean, the, the the, the result of Hata in 93. So it was a particular construction of rational approximations to pi. And um, so which was quite different from what was done before. So before the ideas were mostly based on, on this result of, of Mahler or on the, some, some other thing which is related to Apiary. So I, I will uh, explain on the next slide. But uh, results of Hart in 93 and of Salikov, they were really constructing approximations, rational approximations of pi. And somehow um, improving on, on what was done by Salikov, so, and introducing some new arithmetic ideas. So with uh, Doran Salberger, uh, in January of this year, we managed to, uh, to break the record again. So by approximately 0.5, and to, to prove that the irrationality measure is, okay, so this is some, some uh, transcendental number. So it's, it's a logarithm of, of some algebraic number, but uh, so the point is that uh, it's, uh, yeah, so it can be bounded better than it was before. So going to, to explain a little bit what was before 93. So because all the constructions, they, they didn't use rational, approximations to pi, but they, they use the approximations to the powers of pi. And uh, so you see, I mean, if I have uh, an estimate uh, for, for the approximation of, of uh, pi square, so if, if I have this estimate, okay, so it's, uh, I mean, it's greater than uh, one over u to the nu. So uh, this is valid for say all q large enough. So, and this is another way to say that the measure of pi square is at most new. So that also implies that if I consider a particular family of uh, fractions of the form p square over q square, this is still, I mean, for p q rational, uh, p over q rational, that would be also a rational number. I would get this bound as well. And then I can factor this product of two squares and uh, because I'm interested in, in the case where P over Q is a, an approximation to pi. 
So in order to, to estimate it non-trivially. So the other factor would be like uh, two pi of, of this size. So we would get also the estimate uh, for, for the difference of pi minus p over q. But of course it would be uh, still q to the two nu. So which means that the measure of pi can be roughly estimated by twice the measure of pi square. So if we have a good estimate for pi square, that uh, also can imply the measure of pi. This was the trick which was used in all estimates uh, before um, the paper of Hart in 1993. So they, they were all using some powers of pi. And pi square, so it actually, so Apiri not only proved that zeta 3 is irrational, but he also gave rational approximations to pi square, to zeta 2. And so uh, the development about Apiri's approximation to zeta 2, so it uh, culminated in, in, a, in a remarkable paper by George Hahn and Carlo Viola in 96, where they managed to prove this estimate, 5.44. Um, so which, where they introduce a new arithmetic method, they called the group structure arithmetic method. And with this method, they also got, uh, I mean, the record measure for zeta 3, for the irrationality measure of zeta 3, which you see is very, very close. And the reason is that the group structure is much richer for zeta 3 than for zeta 2. And uh, I can only mention that actually, so for zeta of two, uh, I mean, this record is also now broken. So it's, it's uh, using a completely different construction of approximation to zeta two, not uh, coming from Apiris approximations. So it's slightly broken. But for zeta three, I mean, this measure of uh, Han and Viola is still best possible. And uh, in the, uh, I mean, last year and published uh, actually this year. So there, there is also a, a measure for pi to the four, which uses I mean, a version of this Han and Viola's method. So, and this is my joint work with uh, Marco Vicchio. So we, we proved that the measure of zeta of four or of pi four, so is at most this size. Of course, for pi, it would imply that the measure of pi is four times this constant which is um, not interesting. And um, yeah, but also for, for pi square, this measure is not very exciting because it would be twice five points. So it would be much worse compared to, to what was obtained by Hart in 93. But at least, I mean, to mention that there is some development about the powers of pi and uh, it's completely different because the approximations required are completely different in those cases. Yeah, so I, I give this example. Okay, so uh, a few words about what did Hata huh? and so what, how this construction goes in order to compare it with what was done later. You see, you, you, you take this particular function and A1 and A2 are the numbers. So it's two and one plus I. So where this is just an imaginary uh, unit. So the, the square is minus one. You consider the, the two integrals, and actually these two, they provide simultaneous, very good rational approximations to the numbers log two, but also to, to this uh, number, which is a, a complex number. So it has a real and complex part. But uh, so if, if I would like to be more explicit, so the point is that, so if, if I multiply by a certain number, so, and, and their, their multiplication is done to, to manage all these QNs and PNs uh, to be integers. So in order that I can, uh, I, I really have approximations with integer coefficients. So then QN in, in both forms are, is the same. So even, I mean, I integrate uh, to, to different points. The QN is the same, which is corresponds to the simultaneous approximations. The PNs, of course, will be different because I approximate different numbers, but QNs are also just integers. So they, they, they are not, they don't have I, uh, so they, they are pure integers, while PN and, and PN dash, so the, this kind of extras, are not integers, but uh, Gaussian integers. And so to, to explain what the uh, kind of this uh, multiple is, 
So it comes from the least common multiple of, of the numbers from one to three M in this case. And uh, so the, the, we can take off from, from this uh, least common multiple all the primes, um, so the, well, essentially this product, uh, such that the fractional part of M over P, so if, if you don't see on the screen, this is the fractional part of M over P, so it lies between one over two and two over three. So, I mean, this estimates for the asymptotic behavior of, of the D3M, so it's, it's from the prime number theory, but also the prime number theory can be used to, to estimate what is the contribution of, of this arithmetic gain by M. So it's uh, asymptotically, so it's less, considerably less than three, but still it, it gives a huge saving. And so that were approximations of, of uh, Hatza. And now, I mean, I, I write the integral which was used by Salihab. So now it's, it's, it's really involved. So you can see now that there are all, all kind of, uh, of, of these uh, Gaussian integers running around in this integral. And actually when I write plus minus plus minus, I simply mean that all four uh, multiples for all possible choices appear in the, in the integral. So it means that on the top I would have five factors and everything is raised to the power of 3m. And uh, in the bottom, so I, I have only two, so with, uh, which are raised in 5m plus one, both. And um, so what Sally have showed, so it's, it's absolutely, Astonishing to believe that this integral is a linear approximate, uh, sorry, a rational approximation to pi. So he actually showed that if you compute this integral and multiply it again by something, some suitable factor, so I, I give it uh, explicitly, uh, for even n, so he only used the even n, so you, you would get uh, approximations to pi. So what, what is this factor? So, uh, okay, so this is two in the negative power, so we can save some negative powers of two. So by the way, n is even, so therefore there is no problem in this division. So then we also have to, to kill some denominators coming from five. And then d5n is just the least common multiple of the numbers from one to five n. And uh, so this tilde, uh, phi n is very similar uh, to, to the one in Hatta's case, but the fractional parts of m over p are now between one over three and two over five. And with these approximations, he managed to prove to improve uh, this result of Hatta. By the way, in Hatta's case, the approximations were not only to pi, but also to log two, so because of the simultaneous ones. In this case, um, they are not. So they, they only approximate pi itself. And if you ask me what happens for odd m, so I can say you that there, there would be a different uh, chain of approximations, not to pi, but to the arctangent on one over seven, a completely different number. Okay, so what's, uh, what we did with Doran, uh, we actually, before investing, uh, so the time and, and trying to, to kind of gain so some intuition, what, what are the, the best thing to try. So what we, what we did, we just put uh, different exponents, capital A's and capital B's. So we, we use all the symmetries of the original Salihas construction. And uh, then for different A's and B's, we try to, to see what kind of uh, approximations we get. So it would be again approximations to pi at least if we go along uh, even integers n. And in order to, to construct them explicitly, so you see if you try to, to fit this expression in MAPL and to compute this integral for large a and b and m, so they, they wouldn't be able to do that. But there is a nice way to actually deduce uh, some recursions, polynomial recursions for these expressions. And with these recursions, we can easily compute um, so their, their approximations and then make decisions of what are the denominators, what is the growth of, of these numbers. 
and then we can empirically estimate what kind of measure for pi we will uh, just get by by looking what deltas come out from from large enough n. So large enough, so it's it's roughly we we tried up n up to six hundred. And uh, okay, so we were considering only even n in the original uh, in the original run. So to to determine the recursions, I mean there is an algorithm which goes back to 1990, which was uh, in, in a joint paper of Anquist and Salberger. Now, I mean, it's even more developed, but uh, the point is that it, it runs fast, gives you a recursion, and then in, in a couple of seconds, you, you get all the terms up to 600. And then you can check whatever things uh, you, you would like to check about these approximations. And with this running, so we realized I mean, I, I, I mean, so the A and B, so in, in there, so these are these exponents, A and B. And in Salihaf's case, A was three and B was five. So we realized that, uh, so with the choice A equals two and B equals three, we have much, much better thing. So we, we have the delta, which is larger. So then the one we could get from, from Salihaf's case, A equals three and B equals five. And um, yeah, so that's that was the winning family, A equals two, B equals three. But we also uh, had some some other places, like five and eight was the next one. Then uh, number five was eight and thirteen. And uh, you 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 can suspect that the Fibonacci numbers comes into into play. But actually, so number six on the list was seven ten. And so it's it's uh, far worse compared to the previous examples, but uh, yes, yeah, so at least so that's uh, kind of the things that one could expect if uh, if we prove the things figures. In this case, a equals two and b equals three. A good thing was that we didn't need to to look only for even integers n, so we could also use uh, it for n uh, odd. So, because in that case, we would also get uh, the approximations to, to pi. And so here is uh, a little bit uh, kind of an idea of why, why do we get uh, so pi in, in all these kind of integrals. And of course, I explain it on, on this meaning family. So what, what I do, I, I actually, I shift uh, the variable by five. So in order to, to make the integrand more symmetric, and so th this is the integrand, so which, which is required to be integrated. So five terms, the products, two terms. But of course, if I convert them, um, so if I multiply by, by this whole, using all these conjugations, I will use a completely real expression. And uh, so this is a rational function with the numerator having degree larger than denominator. So we can expand it into uh, partial fractions. And so that would be a, a form of this expansion. And because there is a symmetry of, of this, so the, the AJs would be the same for plus and for minus sign. But also the polynomial P here would be just a polynomial in X square. So not in X, but actually in X square. And you can see from this expression that everything would be like uh, having integer coefficients. I think a, AJs, okay, so they, they will be rational, but PX would be from, from this expression uh, having integer coefficients. Now we need to integrate individual pieces. And if I integrate the, I mean the, the polynomial and just between the two values, of course I will get, so because powers of X, if I integrate, so it would be another power of X. So then I, if, when I evaluate, there would be some rational from this Gaussian field. And the same would happen for, for these expressions if J is non-zero, because I mean, every uh, antiderivative of, of this fraction would actually result in, uh, yeah, in, in some other power of five plus X or five minus X. So I think this is also for the minus uh, sign as well. But if I do this for the zero term when j is zero, so I need to integrate this expression, then magically, oh, oh, so it's not seen what happens after a naught. So this is actually pi i over two. 
So this, uh, the result of this computation of the logarithm, it gives you pi times i over two. So that's the magic where the pi comes from. And because we also have i in front, so there, there would be only pi over two left. And so with some clever kind of arithmetic analysis, and so with some new ideas, so because in Salihov's case, he, he couldn't manage to, to pull the, I mean, for this choice of the parameters, he couldn't get the, the right uh, uh, arithmetic of, of the coefficients AJs, which appear in this partial fraction decomposition. So we managed to prove that, uh, well, we, we, if we multiply by this prefactor, so we have D4n, so the least common multiple of the numbers up to 4n, we have a negative power of two, so which can be saved. And we also can save by, by this uh, standard factor phi n. And surprisingly, phi n is essentially the same as in Hartas consideration, because this is also a product of the primes, which are between half and two thirds. So it's much kind of simpler, and it, it, it links it back to, to Hartas case. And so to just kind of give you a, a short of what, what exactly uh, was the novelty, so the arithmetic one, well, of course that, that's a little bit longer, but uh, I, I don't want to, to, to bother by, by a technical detail. So the point is that we managed to cast the coefficients aj differently. And this cast is only possible for this particular choice of the parameters. And so what we did, so we, uh, we could write aj as, as some linear combination with these coefficients of these binomial expressions, the binomial sum which is involved here. So it, with using some hypergeometric transformation can be written in a very different way. And this expression, if you forget about this minus j, and so j is the same as in ij, if you forget about this, um, so then, I mean, this sum is actually can be uh, recognized as what is called the super Catalan numbers. And the point was that, uh, so in general, uh, so these numbers are kind of closed by their properties, but we cannot write a, a simple expression for them as the quotient of binomial coefficients. But what we managed to do, so that if P is uh, from this special set, which we gain from, and P is uh, congruent, I mean, G is divisible by P, then so we, we could uh, show that the p adic value of, of, of this sum and of, of this one, so is the same. And for that, so we use kind of classical, uh, I mean, Fermat theorem. So one minus T to the P is one minus T to the P, modular P. And um, yeah, so I mean, the, the technicalities are quite involved, but the point is that we, we really use some kind of hypergeometric and combinatorial uh, ingredients, and they are only available for this set of the parameters, this particular one. Okay, so making the story short, uh, I can also say that uh, with this machinery, we, we can um, also try, well, we, we could do um, so the computation for some other constants. For example, we can do for log three. So by considering this integral, uh, they, they are of the same shape as uh, Salikov's integral uh, for, for pi, but with our choice of the parameters. And so we, we could manage, so this is on the bottom of, this, uh, of the slide with this construction to prove that the measure of log three is 5.71 blah, blah, blah. But actually, Salih have already proved a better result choosing a different set of exponents. And, and, uh, and Salih have managed to do that before pi in 2007. Later, he was scooped a little bit. So you see there was a slightly better result coming from improvement of his integral. But uh, finally, two years ago, he, he also came out with a further improvement I think in the fourth place uh, after the decimal. Uh, and uh, so this was uh, a joint work with uh, his former PhD students, Bondaril and Lucci. So therefore this result that comes out from our construction is, is, uh, is not as good as, as 
in the records for Wall Street. And on the final two slides, I, I would like to, to show a table. And uh, this, I, I downloaded this morning from the website Mass World Wolfram. So there is an article on the irrationality measure. And, and there is a table of, of that some, some constants are given and some best bounds are given. And, and then, so the reference is when and, and by whom they were done. So, the, well, I mean, uh, the last two on the list are actually the Q logarithm of two and the Q harmonic series. I, I didn't discuss in my talk. So, okay, pi, pi square, log two, log three. So actually, I think not, not much is correct in this table, actually. Even in the first entry, I, I would say that it's 2020, that would be the right, and probably the last name is, yeah, it's, it's a little bit misspelled. And uh, also the, there were some corrections for the other records. So therefore I, I give you an overview of, of the record, which I believe is correct. So for the pi, so this is this year, and this is the work with Doran. For pi square, it's actually, it was improved. So I, I mentioned that in the talk. For log two, it is indeed uh, from Marco Vicchio in 2009. Log three is, is better. Salihov with, with, uh, with the company. Uh, zeta three, I mean, best possible is still, I mean, Leo Tohan and Viola. And, and then also for log Q, so it was mistakenly uh, given the, the smaller one, which is, okay, so this is a kind of typo in, in that uh, table. And for the Q harmonic series, there, is, there was also an improvement. So here is the state of art, and here is the table corrected. And by this, I just thank, thank everyone uh, for joining this talk. Thank you so much, Vadim, for your wonderful.